Hey, what's up you again guys? This is Paul from Harlequin's Code. I'm a web developer programmer by profession. I'm from the Philippines but working here in Singapore as a software engineer. And today I will walk through with you guys on uh, our one of our security features in Go or any programming languages. But this one is uh, more uh, excep exceptional uh, as I've said that uh, Golang is uh, more... Uh, secure in terms of a uh, programming language guys uh, that you can choose for uh, now we have a different topic here regarding the how we can uh, encrypt and uh, decrypt um, a classified text or a message in golang so this one is uh, more on a medium level of getting started here in in our topic guys uh, in here in maharlikan's code that uh, we need to deal with this uh, encryption and decryption uh, with our uh, specified text uh, which in this case is we need to use this most likely in our applications so we cannot avoid this because we need to uh, hide some classified text like for example our api key or, um, or what you call uh, um, this one is not for password uh, kind of thing guys this is more most likely more on a classified text because um, in our next uh, uh, video we will deal with uh, how we can uh, encrypt uh, then we store this kind of uh, password but this this one is more on uh, most likely we can use this on our uh, what do you call our session uh, encryption or api encryption um, because we need to extract the data back in the, for password thing is is there is only one way we can encrypt that but decryption we cannot uh, decrypt there is one way we, uh, in our next video we will deal with that and then uh, this one is we need to encrypt the classified text and then later on we will use it back to to extract the the, the original text or original phrase or message that we intend to encrypt so that the uh, uh, people may not be uh, reading the, the the pure text there Okay guys, so let's dive into this, uh, our next tutorial series here in Mahalikan's Code. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As, as usual, I prepare for you a small uh, presentation here. Just a bare structure for our uh, this tutorial series in uh, Mahalikan's Code, especially this uh, getting started with Golang. So uh, our discussion for today is regarding this uh, uh, encryption and uh, decryption uh, of uh, any classified text or praise or message in Golang. So right now I prepare with here. This is to initialize our vector. Um, this is a, a random byte here. This one uh, most likely you can make this as a, a random bytes guys but uh, uh, normally I don't touch this. You can uh, you can have your own uh, initialization vector here as usual guys and then your secret key uh, as, an, uh, as our example here uh, I did this um, the secret key but uh, I just place it here as a constant but normally you will put outside uh, of this uh, main uh, go or you can put uh, somewhere any internal package here that uh, all your configuration folder uh, in our previous discussion, if you don't see that, uh, if you don't, uh, if you miss out that the video, you can uh, watch here in my uh, YouTube channel here in American's Code. Then you can have that uh, uh, what do you call getting started with GoLang, all these uh, internal packages or the folder structures here in uh, GoLang. So you can have your internal folder here. You can write uh, any configuration file, and then you place it there. So this secret key might not be uh, at one glance. You can see it in your uh, main that go. And uh, how do you call? Um, okay, so I I also have here the the basic things. Right now we will do uh, we will deal with the new function guys. I will show you how we can encrypt and decrypt. Uh, again, this is not for password thing guys. For password thing, we will do it in our next video. Uh, most probably uh, in our web development uh, web development uh, topics here in uh, Mahalikan's code so right now again uh, as as uh, 
Uh, this is not for password kind of thing because password you, you should not be able to decrypt it back whatever the user uh, key in or your password uh, then you, uh, it may take um, how many years or super computer or whatsoever guys that can decrypt the password uh, with uh, but this in our lifetime we cannot do that <laughs> but anyways uh, this one is um, most likely in our um some text we need to uh, encrypt it especially you know one of most especially guys uh, as one of our practical uh, usage that I've, i've been using this is most likely for uh what you call when you have your web when we deal with a web application guys uh, no worries we will we will sure we will go there in that direction um especially when the user create right when there is a um, sign up page or you have the registration page in your uh, application in your web page in your site most likely you need to uh, encrypt uh, whatever the payload there for example your username and password you can uh, and then the what they call the the activation key when the user receive an email to his uh, or her application or her uh, email address then when somebody clicks the long links uh, for example then um, uh, you have that embedded uh, using this uh, encrypted text but when the user clicks it uh, or the payload itself you need to encrypt it and then uh, later on when the user click to the activation link from their email to confirm their user's account then uh, you can uh, probably extract that back uh, whatever the payload is there by using this uh, encryption method that I uh, that I'm about to show to you and walk through with you today guys so this is uh, uh, all this uh, getting started is I, I my purpose is to prepare you uh, when we deal with the what they call the uh, web development uh, kind of thing or more advanced topic here in um, Harlequin's code so I uh, prepare for you everything here so right now I will we will continue so these things is uh, we have this secret key or whatever guys then we need to have a, um, a non-exportable function here then uh, we could have this um, um, base 64 guys so we need to have this base 64 kind of thing here this we need to uh, we require a byte here and then the string then we just return base 64 and then um, st something uh, what do you call encoding then in std encoding then b so probably we have this as uh, then automatically the go uh, the internal package or the built-in package for go is uh, encoding base 64 so we use this guys these are most commonly used here in uh, any encryption method uh, available out there so we need to decode also uh, base64 encoding here then we need a string to decode back our um, uh, what do you call the classified message uh, text here we will try later on no worries guys so we will just uh, just bear with me a while so we need the base 64 here these are all the standard uh, coding to encrypt and decrypt in golang guys so no worry about this and then we need to decode back the string so we need the string to decode back and then we need the s then so we need to detect again the error then we have this panic here guys panic means uh, this one is if the error will if there is if there is an error it will just uh, uh, keep trying guys uh, the go program itself will will not uh, do the fatal uh, uh, implementation means the fatal means uh, it will terminate the program or terminate any existing process there but uh, we use panic it will not proceed uh, to the next line there 
it will just show you the the standard and the friendly error uh, humanly friend human friendly error <laughs> like you can read this all these errors guys it's a friendly error not like not like the fatal error that you can uh, uh, all the technical uh, descriptions are there uh, this one is a uh, more on the users friendly uh, kind of thing the error message but it will not terminate your program it will just uh, keep trying guys it will just keep trying whatever if the user key in again another uh, um, um, in a correct message or something guys and that it will not throw uh, an error uh, when the decoding process or something and most especially the secret key or your IV your initialization vector there so it will all combine all these strings and um, bytes then it will um, decode back properly your uh, what you call the classified text that you encrypted previously so right now uh, we need to return the data so we will return the correct uh, extracted or decoded uh, strings right now we create again uh, another one uh, this time I will just uh, make it the uh, export our guys uh, I just want to ensure this um, this is our final uh, function that we are about to create guys so we will do this string and then we need a string again and then we we'll return with error so we require these two parameters here as usual we need to do this this is your encrypt um, uh, encrypt method is to encrypt uh, or hide any classified text okay so right now uh, I need this block here this is our local variables here guys AIS we need this AIS this one is the to encrypt the bytes guys to make it bytes and then uh, combine with our what they call the secret key here so we need the secret key from uh, on top okay oops so if error here again then we just return with an empty string and then like this uh, then we need to have a plain text here mm, okay this is a bytes again and then the plain text so we need a text uh, parameter that we want to encrypt so now we need to get the plain text and then we convert it into byte see if we just bear with me guys we use this cipher these are all built in from golang guys so these are all uh, what they call encryptor here so we choose this encryptor cbf encryptor all these things return as streams which encrypts with cipher feedback more so these are all the things guys. so we need a block and then the ib from on top that we declared there so these are all the cypher guys so these are all the standard guys so cypher text these are all we can make here another uh, what do you call we can make a bytes here guys so now we are converting them into bytes and then the length of the string of the plain text okay now this one is now a byte this one is a stream so these are all standard guys from golang so no need to crack our head much uh, cypher text so these are all the cypher text here we need and then the plain text okay then you just return return with encoded uh, base 64 then uh, cipher text these are all the cipher text here sorry. so 
we done our encryption guys right now we need to decrypt we need our decryption function later we will uh, show you how we can do this uh, then your secret key or secret sauce <laughs> okay guys uh, just hold on for a while and then return error again and then uh, we need a block and then the error here and then uh, what do you call EIS again and then uh, uh, this time we need a new cipher still because uh, these are all the things okay we need a block or oh, bytes okay this one is a byte so we need a byte here and then um, bytes and then our secret key and then uh, again guys we need to do this encrypt method is to uh, extract back the encrypted text okay this time we need this uh, the call if error again guys you need to always check this because this one is very important then we can return with an empty string there we don't decrypt anything and then uh, okay then the cipher text cipher text again need to declare local one now we use our internal uh, function uh, uh, on top to decode the base 64 guys so this text now is uh this one is actually the encrypted text guys it's like a funny characters that now uh, humanly cannot um, cannot guess or something uh later i'll show you guys okay no worries okay so now we need the cfb again then the cipher that uh, new and now we need to use the decryptor here which is this one cbs the uh, decryptor and then uh, we need a block and then the ib there always have this ib guys whatever you encrypt them but uh, you need to be careful because uh, if you change here and then you change this or any of these two this IB and then this combination here with your secret key uh, anything you change there may not be um, able to decrypt back your original text the moment you uh, invoke this uh, encrypt function here and then it uses this all, all original one here all your secret key and your initialization vector then uh, probably when you decrypt it you when you when you decrypt back the original text then you can uh, able to decrypt it pro most probably guys and then uh, unless you put back all the secret key for, uh, with the original uh, secret key that you last time you made this then uh, most probably you can uh, able to decrypt uh, the thing guys so uh, most likely we can uh, oh this one is not sorry okay so this one is a base 64 here so always remember that guys so these two combination the initialization initialization vector and your secret key or secret sauce okay guys so we need to make another byte here okay byte then length then your cipher text okay so then you plain text cfb dot uh, what do you call the stream again then plain text and then your um, cipher text okay we're almost done guys no worries then we can convert this into string okay plain text because right now this this plain text is a byte so to able able to convert this into string is we we need this to we need this as a string guys because we need to put back the original phrase or the message from our uh, um, 
classify text or message so just continue now we finish our encrypt decrypt and uh, encryption process here there's only two guys so no worries we will have this kind of a uh, phrase here for example guys this this is uh, you want to make this as a classified information guys so i just want to say hello uh, um, hello uh, hello famous <laughs> Okay, I would like to encrypt this uh, hello world, guys. So, um, this is where to encrypt the phrase here. So, to encrypt, we need the uh, encrypted text here. There's a local variable, guys. So, I need this uh, call the encrypt function there. And then we pass on this uh, phrase. And then we have a secret key. This secret key is always a bundle, guys, because we need this. Um, that's one of our spices there. Okay. Okay, guys. So, right now I use this um, ITR log, guys. So, no worries. We just want to... This is our own thing, our own uh, logging system uh, with... Uh, to make it faster guys our our thing so at this time we need to fatal these things guys because this is a very crucial uh, error message here so your um, for example your classified uh, text so we need to have this um, error guys so, so that the user may know okay so okay so we need to fmt this guy so now we need to display this your uh, what do you call encrypted text is uh, what do you call see your encrypted text so what will happen guys okay so we will run this let's see what will happen okay so now the encrypted text is here we have this, uh, what I call this, uh, yes, as you can see, guys, you cannot read the, actually, this is the hello world. But uh, in our program, we encrypt this by using our encrypt function here. This is the original text, and then with our secret key, uh, combination with the in initialization vector. So all done, the, uh, all this encryption done by uh, Golang itself, guys. So these are more secure one. To now we need to put back this uh, the decrypt the original uh, original phrase okay so now we, we want to put back the original phrase guys so I would like to have the uh, for example um, decrypted text here and then the error here again guys so you, this time we will call the decrypt function there. Then we need this, uh, for example, this is our encrypted text, guys. This is our encrypted text, right? But actually, we can get this from here. This is a string because this one is a string uh, as we require it. Whatever the encryption here, we just simply pass on. You can just copy paste also if you want. But uh, this time... Um, Okay, so to make it uh, uh, visible here in our thing, we can straight away copy this. As you can, okay, then we need a secret key again, guys. So this is very important. Remember to keep your secret key secret status, guys. So ITR log, not fatal again. You can do this. Uh, error decrypting your uh, encrypted text then you can display the exact error so that one is uh, automatically terminate our application guys so now we need to print back all these things uh, we need to display your encrypted text now let's see what will happen decrypted text 
is your this one so now we will see what will happen first we will encrypt and then then it will decrypt as you can see the decrypt back the hello world guys so totally it's working as you know this is a practical example guys uh, later on we will use these uh, same functionalities uh, when we deal with the web development uh, uh, discussion guys so uh, that's all for today guys so it's totally working here uh, this is your encrypted text this one you can give to any uh, of your or whatever whatsoever that you need this uh, for the any encryption that you need uh, most especially as uh, one of my practical example is uh, that I use this uh, technique to uh, to one of your uh, what you call a payload when you have this new user uh, activation that when they click their email click with the link and then after that uh, the user will go back to our site or whatsoever then it will go there and uh, confirm the email address then it will be the email the, the new user account will be activated and uh, they can be able to log into our uh, site so that's all for today guys and uh, we will use this um, uh, later in our web development so stay tuned for that guys so most probably our next uh, video will be on how we can uh, send um, email uh, using golang here uh, by using uh, any of the SMTP there, if you have SMTP or uh, SendGrid, uh, SendGrid API key to send an email, or uh, yeah, most probably uh, we need to use this either of these two guys. So stay tuned for that. Okay, guys, uh, I hope you learn a lot here in Marlikan's code. Uh, as you know, we learn how we can encrypt and uh, decrypt back the original text uh, in GoLang. So this uh, cryptography uh, kind of thing is like uh, we need a secret key that you remember you need to keep this secret key uh, with you. Uh, anyway, our program is uh, in Golang program is we need to compile, right? So we need to compile. This is more uh, secure because we, no one can uh, decrypt back our executable function there. So executable uh, programs or executable uh, exe, uh, exe executable uh, program for our GoLang. So this one is, uh, uh, but uh, be cautious about this. You can uh, put this uh, secret key somewhere else that uh, um, it is hidden further. But uh, this one, no need for you to. This my opinion. No need for you to. Uh, what do you call? Uh, encrypt again but it's up to you guys uh, there's another layer kind of thing of uh, encryption you need to encrypt this um, secret key but uh, normally we don't do that uh, because we compile this in our uh, uh, in our program before we deploy it we compile the program so so in golang so nobody can uh, nobody can uh, get this unless uh, it, it's stolen your uh, what you call the source code itself so in this case guys or um, well, what do you call uh, this cryptography is very important on our application in our day-to-day -day application because this one we need this uh, secret key and the IV which is the what we call the initialization vector uh, that uh, randomize uh, these uh, bytes to initialize to initialize uh, the strings before we before the golang encryption uh, uh, takes place takes place in our uh, during the encryption process and then it will decrypt back using this uh, combination of our uh, what they call the initialization vector and with our sp especially most especially with our uh, secret key this secret key should combine all most of the characters there or whatsoever guys they humanly cannot be readable but uh, but keep keep this in mind that you need to keep this uh, secret key because that's why it's secret key this is the key to unlock your your classified text so that's all for today guys and um, i hope you learn a lot here in marlikan's code and uh, we will deal with a few things here in uh, getting started with golang i hope i covered most of the things here uh, we will see it in our next video uh, maybe we can have this uh, 
uh, after this we will deal with the uh, uh, what do you call uh, another project uh, maybe this one is very useful for you guys so it's a small project then we will deal with this uh, the one I told you in my, in, uh, in my previous uh, video that uh, we need this to uh, what do you call uh, to notify us when there is a uh, uh, something error in our uh, Windows Task Scheduler, so stay tuned for that, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. May, you may consider uh, subscribing to my channel, and uh, so that you have uh, more videos like this. And um, well, I will share here whatever I have something uh, project and uh, share it with you guys. Uh, just stay active in my uh, video. Kindly subscribe to my channel. And you can have all these things, uh, tutorials or software software that I uh, personally built here. I like Go programming language in my uh, personal projects or something, guys, because I really like the way Go handle the programs. And uh, it, it is more faster one. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. May God bless us all. Thank you and bye-bye. Uh,